Thank you. So first, a quick question. How many of you are, well, you can be many things, but developers, software developers, and more IT operation? OK, well, majority of developers, I think that's uh, one of the shift uh, uh, this, uh, this industry is bringing. So that's the topic of uh, what I want to talk about today. Um, so I'm not sure if uh, you've read that book once. It's a pretty uh, thick book, so uh, you need to have time on your hands. Maybe with New Helic, you have plenty of time now uh, because your systems are, are working fine. Um, it, it just goes through the history of you know, what led to the World War I and, and what led then to World War II uh, and a, a huge uh, change in society and those big empires uh, uh, changing and, and dying and, and new type of society coming up and so on. It's, it's a fantastic book, especially if you prefer histories to history with a big H. Um, so, so that's great. And I think it's really an analogy we can, uh, we can take here uh, for what's going on with, this, uh, with the IT industry. So that's what I want to cover today, what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, we have popcorns and beers and we're watching what's going on in this industry. And I think we're going through a fantastic time, what's going on now. And uh, so, so I wanted to, to expose some of that and then also give some hints as to what it means uh, as an end user, not just for the giants, but, but really for, for users. We also see this move through the century uh, as a move towards more democracy, where uh, things were more equal for people. And I think this is also what we're observing with IT, where the huge economy of scale that, say, a huge bank could benefit from uh, versus a small SMB, I think this is also changing and it's making it possible for smaller companies to get the power uh, and, and systems that, that uh, the, the bigger enterprises could, could get. So to keep going with my, my analogy, something that started uh, you know, at the end of the 19th century and, and in the maybe 50 years after was the electrification. So that's kind of the second part of the industrialization where uh, um, people were able to really get the benefit of electricity. And it really started as something very high tech. It looks a bit crappy like that, but really this was, you know, the Tesla of, of uh, 1880. Uh, it was pretty unique. You had to be extremely rich and, and IT centric to get that type of, of, of tools to generate electricity. Fast forward 50 years from now and pretty much, well, 50, 100 years, you know, a long time. And we went through extreme standardization, right? You have producer of electricity, you have distribution of electricity, and you, as a user, the pretty, pretty much the only thing you're going to see is this plug. You only care about that plug. Anything that's behind, you don't care about. And so um, I think in IT, we're going through the same steps. And uh, uh, today, I feel like we're really in the infancy of IT. We're still very much building our own electricity generator uh, for each and every application we need. So this is kind of our electrical generator, right? We start with uh, uh, data center infrastructure, networking, the servers, operating system, clustering, load balancer, application servers, and blah, blah, blah. And we end up with this nice little box at the top called applications, which is, as a business, should be what you care about. And this stack is not just long because it has many words in it, it's long because it represents a heavy investment in, in capital expense, in people, in you know, buildings and so on, that's a lot. Just take this little box here, servers. It's estimated to be a 40 billion market a year being spent just for that li little box. So if you look at this, it's, it's really a lot of things you need to do to just get to this box at the top. What that means is that first you get little differentiation, uh, frankly, between the Dell server you have and the Dell server your competition has. By and large, it's Dell server, so no, no big difference and so on. So you realize that even though your business might be to produce cars or to sell health insurance, what you're going to have is to become extremely good at things that are totally outside of your core business, managing those big electrical generators. And so, you know, I see this as the iceberg, right? You really care about the top of the iceberg, but really to get there, you first need to build a, 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 huge, uh, a, a huge piece of ice. Um, and, and so we know that you know, in the, in the wild, I would say, nature tends to, to always push towards specialization and simplification. We go to, towards what's simpler. So, you know, as a company, 
Do you think you'd better uh, simply use electricity by plugging sis a server in your, in your wall, or should you build a nuclear plant? Well, that's an easy one, right? But, but really, if you try to apply the same thinking to the rest of the stack, you can really wonder uh, what you should be doing as, as, as a company. And so I think as a business, because that, that's really what you are about, right? As developers, your goal is really to make your company more competitive. What's going to make your company win against the other? What are you going to make to reduce costs? That's really what's going to make you different. And that's the tip of the iceberg. And everything under is not going to differentiate you. I'm not sure if you think that your company can win against the competition because you're faster at installing Linux, uh, but I hope not, right? But that's really the industry in which we live, where 80, 90% of the investment is done on things that are absolutely non-differentiating. You are doing exactly the same thing as your competition, and to do that, you hire plenty of people that are really not helping you with your core business, to build cars, sell, sell health insurance, and so on. So if we try to deconstruct the iceberg, if we try to, to look at what's going on, what we've seen through that move towards more simplification, more specialization, are those well-known YAS, PaaS, SaaS layers, right? So, you know, those layers, infrastructure as a service, like Amazon Web Services, like Rackspace, like Azure, are really trying to outsource the non-core task from an infrastructure standpoint to make sure you don't have to do that. Platform as a service, same things, but not aimed at IT guys, but aimed at the majority of you, which are developers. So you don't care about the server, you don't care about storage per se as a developer, you care about applications, you care about code repositories, you care about build and test, that's the kind of things you care about. Um, and so that's again a way to take all of that layer that you care about and outsource it so that you're not the one in charge of that. I'm sure some people can do it better than, than you can. So that's, that's the end picture, really, right? So uh, you want to consume everything that leads to, 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 to having you do your job better as a service, just as a plug. What's behind? Not your business, really. It's an, an implementation detail, if you will, right? There is software behind, fine. Uh, but, uh, but, but that's, that's clearly uh, not what you're looking for. Um, and so you're not buying software anymore. You're not installing software. You're not patching software. You know, think New Relic. You're not going installing New Relic on your servers uh, and, and trying to make them work and patch them and so on. You directly enjoy the power of New Relic as a service. If they were to implement New Relic with something else than software, who cares? Well, obviously, you need software. Um, and so by focusing just on this layer as a developer, this is what's going to make your business win. And for everything else, you can get increased time to market. No need to call IT guys and tell them, hey, I need a new server. Well, yes, sure, you'll get it in three months. Yeah, well, no, I want it now. And oh, by the way, uh, we, we only have that old version of the software that's a you know, certified stack. Well, but I need something else. I want to go fast. Fast is what's going to define your business. And this layer here, it's really the crown jewel of the company. That's not made to go fast. That's, that's made to remain up and running 24 by 7. And so you want more freedom. They want more security. Um, so that's, that's really what, uh, things, you know, where things are going towards services. Uh, as a company, you know, if you fast forward, say, five years, 10 years from now, I suspect that the decisions will be something like, can I, f I have a new business requirement. There is something I need to do for my business. Can I find a software as a service that will solve my need? If I can, you know what? I'm going to use that. If I can just sign up on Salesforce and get a CRM, I'm done, right? I'm not going to hire a little army of guys to set up a CRM on premise and in two years, maybe it's going to work. Now, can I always find a software as a service that fits my need? No, not always, especially if it's specific to your business, right? If you're selling health insurance, you're not going to find a SaaS to sell health insurance because that's your business. So you need to provide something custom. You need to create something custom. Well, when talking to customers, we realize that more than 80% of what they need to do custom is pretty standard, actually. What I mean is 
It doesn't need some sophisticated stack, some strange drivers with some sophisticated operating system. You know, it's Java code, it's PHP, it's, it's whatever, you know? But it's pretty standard, and everything below can be standardized as well. And so that's platform as a service. And, and so, yes, you'll always find 10, 15, it depends on which industry you are in, of software that will require you to have complete control on the stack, to change the last bit uh, in the Linux kernel. Yeah, I bet. But for the majority of what you have, you can handle your problems with SAS and PASS in a much more efficient manner. So if you look at this move towards simplification and standardization, we have the giants. What I mean by the giants is all of those huge companies which for 10, 20, 30 years, and for some of them 100 years, have been there selling hardware, software, you know, the HP, the Dell, the IBM, Oracle, all of those companies, those huge vendors, there's the giants. And so everything they do is based on an economy of data center cores. You know, they're selling cores either at the hardware level, which is really where the war is starting now, and slowly going up, selling licenses at the core in data centers, selling to the CIO top down. And so this is, for example, the worldwide PC market year on year gross rates, you know? Well, gross, meaning we, tell we, s we call that gross because there is a positive number at the in the first box, right? But essentially, anything else is going down. Does it mean we do less IT? We, le we use less servers? No, we're using much more servers. Yet, we seem to be dropping on, on those boxes. Software, it's not there yet. I think the real war is still taking place. It started at the, at the hardware level, but it's slowing going up. Take those gigantic vendors like Oracle and, and IBM, you know? Oracle says they're going through much growth compared to IBM. It's, it's more because IBM is not doing necessarily great these days. So they say they're doing much better. Uh, but you know, flat for four quarters on average, going down for IBM, it's, it's tough. It's really a tough model. And this standardization is not just impacting the data center, what's going on on the server. It's also impacting your client devices. We're also trying to standardize everything. Remember, <coughs> when we talked about electricity, it was not just the electrical generators that got standardized. It's a full chain, you know, where you produce, how you distribute, how you consume. Same thing, the data center is where you produce, you know, where you process things. Then you have distribution. Well, we're lucky we have something called the internet. And then you have devices consuming this, HTML5, you know, a great standard plug. You don't need to have your specific Windows device just because you installed a software that required a Windows device. How many SaaS today force you to install some Microsoft-specific, Windows-specific clients? Very few. Every SaaS you'll find is just web-based. So we're going through that standardization step, that step by step. Windows PC shipment, you know, the, the shipment of, of those machines, again, plus 30 person going down, that's the iPad launch, right? So people are really changing their behavior as new ways to do things uh, happen. So those are the giants, today's giants. Well, what about the new giants? Who will be tomorrow's giants? So those are the estimated revenue for AWS, Amazon Web Services, the biggest cloud provider to date. And that's only AWS. I'm not counting Rackspace. I'm not counting uh, uh, Azure and other uh, providers. Look at this growth for five years, under half a billion, flying under the radar. You know, well, yeah, AWS is just for startups. Well, are you sure? Because it seems to ramp up pretty fast. It's going to be close to four billion this year, just in infrastructure as a service. And where is it going? Estimations are that it's going to be close to nine billion in two years. We'll see, right? Could be higher, could be lower, but we can't be in denial. It's something big. And this money doesn't get created out of hot air, right? It comes from somewhere, and it comes from servers that are not sold otherwise. Just take a comparison, because sometimes speaking about billions is kind of abstract. Those are Red Hat and VMware's revenue for FY13, so the last fiscal year they got. So we have the biggest Linux distributor to date. That's a small uh, orange box on the left. And VMware, the worldwide seller of virtualization on the market, 
that's about the same size as AWS this year, right? Just to put in perspective what's going on here on the market. So what's interesting about huge shift like that is that typically you, you have many, many shifts on the market. You know, the change from one type of database to the other that happened like 30 years ago, the move from mainframe to, to smaller systems and so on. So we went through many of those changes. But most of the time, those changes were specific to one industry. And so you had the leaders in that space that were kind of challenged because that's where they were good, but only there. So they had to find a way out, essentially. But the big guys, the very big guys, they had multiple feet to dance on, right? Take a Microsoft. You know, you could kill pretty much any foot. They would still be able to dance. Huh? It's, it's like, a, it's like a, a, <laughs> a spider, right? Yeah, exactly. And what we see with those huge shifts, right? It's radically changing everything. Mobile devices, operating systems. We don't need those big operating systems. I just care about a, a just enough operating system. A gr group where, how do you communicate on documents? This is changing as well, you know? Um, uh, search, social, everything is changing. And so you see those giants dancing on many feet, you know, suddenly boom, 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 cutting their feet. And that's what makes it extremely interesting because that opens the door to new type of companies and, and new giants. So at the end of the day, uh, software and services are kind of the same thing, right? It's a long series of one and zero. Just, put, just need to put them in the right order so that it works. But other than that, it should be the same, right? So why can't those companies move from being software vendors and, hey, snap, I'm a services company today? Well, it's hard. It's very hard. Uh, I, I was at Red Hat before being at, uh, at CloudBees uh, and before that at JBoss. And so I was very much thinking about software all day long. And if you think about how you do things, it's radically different. For example, in engineering, you know, take engineering. Do, do you still think that Google supports Gmail 1.0? No, you don't have the notion of Gmail 1.0. You have one main branch. It's what happens today. Yeah, sure, you could go back to some older branch. Uh, yes, you could have parallel branch for testing and many things like that. But overall, all of your attention as an engineering team is focused on that branch. Your QA team on that branch. Is your QA team trying to make Gmail work on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS? No. They're testing on one server, their server, their stack, that's it. It simplifies a lot of things. Just, just think about companies like, like Red Hat, um, a company I, I really like. And you have this company that has to support Linux, RHEL, for five years. Sometimes for specific distribution for telco, it's up to 10 years. You know what does that mean? It means that you have QA guys whose job is just to wait to take uh, specific patches and backport those to many, many branches, dozens of branches. That costs money, right? The guys that do that, do they provide value for the next version of the software? No. They just focus on that branch. So that's totally changing the way we organize engineering. At CloudBees, our engineers are you know, as much developers as DevOps. They participate to the live support stream. That's what we see in those SaaS companies. You know? um, also, sales. Well, that might be a bit remote for developers, but I can tell you it's, 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 it's very different. If you're a sales guy working at Microsoft, you get told, well, you need to sell Windows. OK. So, hey, Mr. Customer, how many CPU do you have? Okay, 200, so 200 times uh, X, I go L Y. Okay, here's a PO, and you need to sell for 1 million a year, 2 millions, whatever. I'm not saying it's an easy job, but it's pretty mechanical, right? You can predict what's going on. Now, let's try to sell CloudBees or Heroku, it's a nice presentation, or Google App Engine. Well, it's usage-based. So you're a sales guy. You're going to talk to Mr. Customer and say, hey, you should really use CloudBees. Oh, yeah, should I? Yeah, it's great. OK, I'm going to try it. First month, 20 bucks. Oh, great customer. Next month, 35 bucks. Wow, almost 100% growth. Amazing. But how do I pay my sales guy? You know, How do you do that? So especially if you're a company that already sells software and you have to sell 1 million of something plus uh, 50 bucks of something else, and I think I've done my choice, right? So it's completely changing the DNA of those companies and how they operate. And that's a tough thing to do for anybody. Nobody likes change. So how do we do that? Well, let's move everything to the cloud. Sasha tells us it's great, it's where it's going, so let's do it. 
Yoo-hoo. So that's exactly what obviously we don't want to do, right? Uh, because that, that comes with uh, a lot of issues. So what we, what we see a lot and more and more is kind of a different and more mature view uh, of the cloud. We still hear a lot, about a lot of discussion about private cloud, public cloud, data center, public cloud, yes versus pass. We love that, you know, maybe it's a gossip uh, style in, in, in us, but we love to, to see things one against the other, two columns, check boxes, which one is best. And I think it's, it's exactly what we shouldn't be doing. If we look at how things work for an enterprise, typically, that's where they are, right? Nice building, they're using on-premise software, uh, uh, plenty of Oracle Rack databases, some web here, some SAP, so plenty of, of, of great stuff. And that's core IT, that's their core IT. It can never go down. The job of IT is to be completely paranoid and to make sure that it's gonna be up at all time. If it goes wrong, they're gonna be fired. And on the other side, we have where they need to go. Well, enterprises get told, hey, you absolutely need the mobile application. Oh, you don't have one? Then you're not talking to your users, I'm sorry. Right? So it's really this big push towards much more application, new application. And you need agility, you need to discover. And guess what? You're gonna do things wrong. I hope so. Because through the discovery process, you're gonna have plenty of good ID and plenty of horrible ID. And you need to be able to self-select those very quickly. You know, try it, doesn't work, done. Kill it. And for that, you need a way to do things with those many iterations with no friction. If it's going to take you three months to just get a server to try your new pet project, well, good luck for the fast selection. So you need something in between, which we call fast IT. And so we see lots of very mature company now looking at things in a very pragmatic fashion. They're not trying to say it's A or B, make your bet. You know, you're with us or against us, right? No, it's, we have this. Let's not be in denial. We have 20, 30 years of IT behind us. We're not gonna change that overnight. Neither should we. It's stable, it runs, keep it. Yet at the same time, we have lots of new applications and we need to be competitive. How do we do that? Well, we take a fast IT environment. We make it possible to create new applications, new workloads, extremely fast, no friction. Here, it's not about 24 by seven. It's never gonna go down. No, it's about going fast, iterating, pushing new value, testing, testing, testing. And then you make a hook in between. And you make sure that this fast IT can leverage those assets, right? You want to make sure that, obviously, you can use your list of customers and list of employees to create value. It's not going to be independent things. And then with this, you can be even closer to your customers because your customers, they are in the cloud. You know, They are using the internet. They are wired. So by doing that, you're even closer from where they are. Sometimes the question I get is, yeah, but you know, we're very sensitive to, sen to security, so uh, we, we don't really like to be putting things in the public cloud. Yeah, fine, but you're gonna do those applications anyway, right? So are you gonna do mobile applications? Yeah, we are. Right, so what are those applications gonna be? Tetris? Games? No, 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 we wanna have the list of customers so we can, yeah, well, that's here. So data is going to flow. The, the equation of, on one side, it's, it's inside, and it's great, and it's protected, and the other side is evil, and you shouldn't put any data, is over. We're facing liquid firewalls now. Some of your data will need to go out, and it will have to be protected somehow. But it's, it's changing the situation anyway. And this is driven by your business. You want this data to be out because you want your guys in the field to be efficient. So if somebody tells you now we have to keep data inside, those are going to be fun mobile applications. So core IT and fast IT is just one way, and it's not specific to cloud business. It's really a very efficient and pragmatic way to decide and say, how do we want to get started with the cloud and stop being in denial about either one or the other? So again, core IT, fast IT, it's not about a dat data center versus the public cloud. It's not one or the other. It's not about public cloud versus private cloud. If you want to set up your private cloud on premise, fine, you'll get more efficient, do it. It's about extending and leveraging what you already have and do both at the same time. And you get to decide what goes left or what goes right. And many companies will, have, will make different choices. 
You know, it's like purely basic decision tree for any new application, left or right, core IT, fast IT. So, uh, as a conclusion, um, well, you get my thoughts, right? The industrialization of IT can't be avoided. It's, it's a natural movement of simplification uh, and, 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 and specialization. Uh, this will create a new generation of Sybases, you know, boring companies that had once a great brand, great IP, great databases, everything now, you know, not so sexy, great revenue, right? Stable. But that's where those giants, the existing giants, will end as a new generation of Sybase. And the new giants uh, are coming up. So as a user of technology, you can decide what do you want to do. You can ignore, you can embrace. Um, my personal advice to you is, is really not to make it a problem uh, and, and, and just start embracing things step by step. Uh, my other advice would be um, don't try to make things complicated. Don't start with hard problems. You'll have, you know, as developers, you'll have to convince your boss. You'll have to convince your management. You'll have to show them the value. And you'll have to learn many things. So don't start where it's hard. Start with basic problem, easy application, try, move, see how it works, get everybody on board, and move, move to the next complexity. You know, if you can ret run Netflix in the cloud, chances are high that you can run quite a few of your applications. So uh, you'll get there. That's it for me. So if you have any questions, I'll uh, be happy to take them. Yeah, so how does the existing vendor can find a way out, essentially? And uh, I think, um, um, it, first, it's hard. So it's not because, you know, you have legacy, stupid companies. They can't do it. They're very smart. They, they know exactly what's going on. Um, I think the best way to do it is to create a container, an entity, a new entity that's associated to the main one, but to leave it alone. Don't make pressure. What kills those new entity typically is because the legacy business says, no, you can't do that. It's killing some of our business. Yeah, but it, your business is going to die anyway. So breathe, you know. So uh, you, sh you, you really need to take that, put it in a container. I think what that's interesting. What VMware did with Pivotal, for example, is very interesting. It's a way to say, let's take some assets, put them in a distinct container. Let's leave VMware, EMC go on, you know, in one direction and let those guys innovate. That's, that's creative. Okay. Any other question? Yes? Uh, example of core IT? It's IT as we see it today. Anything. Anything within the data center is core IT. Um, anything that IT is doing today, maintaining all of the investment in capital expenditure, all of that is core IT. Okay? Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, and, and, and so, you know, if, if, if you're going to ask those guys to do everything they do today, which is a lot, plus become agile, pl plus become aware of the net next new things in, in mobile applications and so on, it's not going to happen in a snap. Yet business needs it in a snap, so you have uh, attention there. Oh yeah. That they're out there doing it and eventually it becomes part of the company and they say, I guess it works after all. Yeah. Does that happen with you as well? Yeah, it's it's a big, big trend. And it each, it happens each time there is disruption. Take open source. Open source you would go speak to CIOs, they would say, No, we don't use open source, it's way too risky. We don't understand what those licenses mean. And you get open source all over the place, right? Nobody wanted to reinvent a logging framework. Um, and then uh, you got that with SaaS. 
Salesforce.com was the first one. You had those companies. I had a, a, a next colleague of mine who was coming from Sun in UK. They had dozens and dozens of Salesforce accounts, and nobody was using the CRM of the company. It was too complicated and wouldn't work. Um, so it was all over the place, but nobody would sell it, right? And the same is true uh, uh, with, with New Relic. Uh, the same is true with CloudBees. Lots of bottom-up adoption from within the trenches. So it's really about how to sell cloud to your boss, right? That, that's really the, the, the things that you have to push. Um, and that's also why it's hard for some, for some of those giants, because those giants are coming top down. They're talking to the CIO, they're going and play golf with, with the guy, right? That's fine, but that's not enough for, for, for big changes. Thank you.